like we have a lot of people here. This is this is exciting. This is terrific. Yeah. So welcome everyone. This is um, first session for our hands-on machine learning uh, uh, study group, and today's meeting is mainly going to be an orientation. Um, we'll just sort of talk about all the 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 way we're going to carry it out and uh, look at some of the resources that we have available and uh, just get everybody ready to dive in. So I'll wait a little bit longer for people to show up usually by about five minutes after most of the people that want to come that are going to be here are already here. So it looks Hey, Joseph, I have a question. So we do, uh, there's a session scheduled on Wednesday as well. Sorry. Yes, yes. Um, so um, the, uh, can you see the screen that I'm sharing? Um, I think I'm sharing the discussion from the hands-on machine learning group that... Uh, yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah, so this is the discussion that predates that. We, we decided uh, how, we're gonna, how we're gonna do the class. Um, and uh, the idea was to have, well, let me, let me just wait one more minute and then I'll just get started with, uh, and I'll discuss this, but yeah. Um, so I'll answer your question. Um, in the meantime, can I ask another question? Sure. Um, so if, 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 if somebody's not able to attend the session on Wednesday because of difference in time zones, uh, are you going to post the answers or something on the, on the channel? Um, post the answers? You mean? Or the completed workbooks? Um, I'm not sure about that. We'll see. Um, I'm not sure if we have permission from the author to, to do that, but will what about the recordings maybe yes yes that. that's what i was going to get to we will we will be able to have recordings and i'm hoping that we'll be able to post them almost immediately um after the meeting so if you happen to miss i know some of you are in time zones where it's where it's not convenient to come to one or both of the one or the other of the sessions i should say the the session at uh this session at 10 a.m is probably okay for uh, you know, for people in the UK and, and in Europe, and uh, <clears throat> but uh, but the and the session at the session at night that we're going to have uh, on Wednesday evening that's probably not okay for the people in the UK because they're going to be sleeping. So uh, <laughs> you know, it's impossible. <laughs> yeah, it's impossible to to set up time zone to set up a time slot that's uh, amenable to everyone, and we're trying to do that. I think that. Um, there, there is a solution, and that is if I had both sessions at five o'clock in the morning Pacific time, I think almost everybody would would be able to, to even even people in Hawaii, <laughs> would, no, probably people in Hawaii wouldn't be able to come, but anybody uh, west of California and all the way to Japan would probably be able to make th those sessions because they would be at some reasonable time during the day, but but. Uh, but it wouldn't be reasonable for me. So, <laughs> so yeah, I, we're just doing the best we can to, um, to provide coverage that, so yeah, the, the, there will be a session at 10 a.m. on Sunday like today, and then there will be a second session on Wednesday evening, 6.30 to 8.30 uh, Pacific time. And the second session is not gonna be the same as the first session. The second session is gonna be uh, a continued uh, a discussion of all of the work that we're doing uh, that for that week. So it's going to be a supplementary to, it's going to be supplementary to the reading discussion. Okay, so might as well just get started. So um, yeah, so so this is the schedule that we have. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna have these two meetings. Um, the first meeting is gonna be sort of weird for some of you. It's gonna be mostly silent reading. It's gonna be everybody's gonna show up at at 10 o'clock and then we're all gonna just, uh, we'll talk a little bit about, give an introduction, overview of what's what's in today's reading assignment. Then we'll just sit there for an hour silently reading. Uh, and that's really weird to a lot of people because you haven't done that. But um, it, I find that it, that, that kind of a format does work um, uh, for, for the following reasons. It's kind of like going to the gym with a friend. You know, you, ha you, know you have to get your ass out of bed and get ready and, and be there. And um, so just showing up is, is almost half of a any kind of a disciplined effort. Just showing up and being ready to do the work is 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 uh, is half of it. So, by getting you all here at 10 o'clock in the morning on Sunday, ready to read, ready to study, um, I think it's going to work for people. Um, I think a lot of people will find that it works for you, even though you think it's weird. Um, after that, hours reading will then reconvene for a 
45 minutes roughly to discuss what we've read and then everyone um, should, pit, should, uh, should chime in. During the reading, you should probably be taking notes on what you're reading and anything that is, um, that is difficult for you to understand, just make notes of that or, or maybe something that you think could be explained better, make a note of that and maybe you wanna contribute the better explanation. Um, that's what the, the 45 minute discussions are. We're just gonna sort of, the person who's, uh, who's leading the meeting will just le lead a discussion on, this, on the material and then people will just chime in um, asking questions or making contributions as we go. That's how it's intended to be. Okay, and then the second meeting of the week will be on Wednesday. We decided that on when, by a poll. Um, scrolling down here, we had a poll. And uh, most of the people that participated chose Wednesday. So that, that won over Thursday. Um, so that meeting will be uh, roughly 60 minutes uh, going over the Jupyter Notebooks for that lesson. And then the next 60 minutes going over the coding assignments and the exercises. And uh, as I said, we may not be able to um, show the answers because of, of copyright limitations. I'll, 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 I'll check that, but um, I, don't, I don't think any author of a book would want people to publish the answers to, their, to the problems uh, freely available. It's just not, not a good idea. Um, so we'll discuss them in our group and then the, the videos will be made available. That, that's one thing I can guarantee that We've had trouble with that in the past with some of these classes, but I think now we've worked it out so that the, the video recordings of the study groups will be uh, readily available. And that's gonna be great for everybody because a lot of people just can't be there on the Wednesday night session. Okay, before I just get started, um, <clears throat> I'd invite anybody to um, ask questions or introduce themselves. Um, tell me why, tell us why you're here, uh, what you hope to get out of the class. Um, Please feel free to unmute yourselves and jump in. Hey, right. Joseph. Hi, Go ahead. Quick question um, on the recordings. Um, are they going to be available within the week? Yes. Okay. Yes, hopefully within, within days, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. I'm, I'm pretty sure we're gonna be able to do it within days. Maybe okay. even within one, within, uh, my, my goal would be to have the recording available within, within 24 hours. That's what I'm gonna shoot for. Are we going to have session on this Wednesday? Yes. Okay, right. All right. Um, hi, everybody. I just want to begin by thanking Joseph for taking the time to put this together. There clearly is a lot of interest, and organization study groups like this do not work until someone like Joseph takes the time to put it all together. So I just want to begin by thanking Joseph very much for, for putting this together. Uh, quick question, Joseph, you, uh, and I posted this on the chat, um, you mentioned the answers to the questions in the, from the textbook. Do we have answers to the questions from the textbook or are we going to come up with it as a group? Um, if, if we come up with it as a group, then I think it's open, it's okay to share it amongst ourselves on the Slack channel that, oh, here was a question from chapter two, third question, here's what I think. There, that's, I would think that would be okay, but I do, does anybody have formal official answers? I don't have them. Um, so we'll, um, yeah, it's, but I think you're right. I mean, as, as if we're in the context of discussing these, we come up with solutions and show them uh, uh, in Jupyter Notebooks and so on. I, I don't think that's, um, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Mm -hmm. We'll see how that goes. That's the, as Rekel says in the chat, the, question, I mean, the answers to questions rather than to problems is already provided in the book. Oh, in the okay. appendix as well. Yeah, as in the, as it's in the already data. provided. Okay. Yeah. Good. So Good. it's Good. only Good. Jupyter notebooks or assignments or problem sets that we are talking about. And that obviously, as Joseph said, it's okay to share snippets of the code, but uh, it would be, I don't think it'd be appropriate to post it as solutions. Although if you look for it, on GitHub, yes. probably it's probably it. there. Probably yeah. there. Yeah, everything. Yep. Even if you search hard enough, you can find just about anything and everything. And I'll just leave it at that. Um, <laughs> so my, uh, I'll I'll share uh, some of the starting points. The reason why I'm joining. I've been using this book for a long, long time. I even have the, uh, I I got the paper copy uh, of this, the first version, first edition of this book before. Uh, and we're on, he's on edition two, and I think there's still some edits going on before the 
formal publication of this book or unless it's already out there. Um, I've been using this book and promoting this book for more than two years at the very least. I use um, Aurelian's uh, GitHub repo and his notebooks myself for a number of different reasons. This is, um, and so an opportunity, the reason why I'm joining and want to be going through this all the way through is because um, I'd like to go through it from step by step, every code block uh, from beginning to end that Aurelian's put together. Um, one, just a question out to everybody. Has anyone reached out to Aurelian Giron himself and let him know that we're doing this? Um, I think he'd get a kick out of it. And maybe if he has time, um, he might even want to join us. I actually did reach out to him. I asked him, I invited him to give us a, uh, to give us a, a short, uh, uh, you know, to, to, yeah, to come to our meeting and give us a short introduction to his book. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't get a response from him. <laughs> So, but uh, yeah, but that's a good idea. It had occurred. Yeah. Thank you, Joseph. Uh, okay. Um, I want to show you, let's see. I want to show you something. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, okay. I think I'm sharing the, uh, the view of all the people that are here. Can you see that? No, it's just your screen. It's black. It's black. Oh, it's black. Oh, it's black. Seeing only the slide. Okay, um, I'm obviously not sharing what I thought I was sharing. Okay, let me try again. Uh, let's see. Uh, Joseph, you got a new computer. Uh, oh, no, I've had this computer for a while. Oh, your, your <laughs> camera is very, uh, your picture is very clear, vivid. Oh, I, yeah, I have a nice camera. So, I mean, it's not, it's not expensive or anything, but it's nice. Okay, this is what I wanted to share with you. Um, can you see that now? With the it's view black. of... Oh, okay. uh, still the slack. Still slack I can't believe this. Okay. Okay. Let me see. Let me get rid of that. Um, sorry about this. Okay. Uh, this is what I want to share. Yeah. How about now? Uh, yeah. Google we can Drive. See the plan. Oh, you're, oh, this the plan. Okay. Well, I wanted to show you the view of how many people are in this class. We have. It looks like we have like uh, over over 70 people here, and I'm just really excited to see such a turnout. Um, so uh, yeah, let's continue. This is the, this is the uh, schedule. We've, we've, we've already got people assigned to every lesson. Um, when, um, although there is room for more, um, I think what I had intended was that each person who signs up for uh, you know, one chapter, and the chapters are sometimes I broke them up into several weeks. Um, my intention was that one person would be, would present the whole chapter. Now uh, we have also doubled the number of meetings per week. So a chapter might be four meetings, for example. Chapter two is going to be two weeks, and so there'll be four meetings, the Sunday and the Wednesday. So uh, I can imagine that other people might, there, there's, there's room for other people. And if um, if you want if you still want, if you still want to present, even though you see that all of the all of the presenters are taken, the slots are taken, uh, write yourself in beside the person who's in there. Don't wipe their name out. Make sure that you write yourself in beside them, and then they'll know that you're available to help if they need it. And and secondly, you can be an alternate in case they're not able to come. You know, so somebody sometimes you sign up for something weeks and weeks in advance, and then something comes up, a family emergency, and you're not able to or something else you're not able to present. Well, if someone else has signed their name besides yours, then they can be the alternate. So I encourage anyone who wants to, uh, who feels like they want to present, um, to sign yourself up next to somebody who's already there, and then you can be the alternate, or you can share the duties with, uh, with the person uh, who's the assigned uh, uh, lead, and that's up to them whether they want to share. So you can contact them and, and, and offer to share and see what they say and so on. So that, that's how we'll do it. I've, 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 so, um, so this <clears throat> schedule is up. It's, if you look in the channel for the hands-on machine learning, it's at the top when you, when you look for the pinned items. This is one of the items that's pinned to the top, so you can always get to it. Um, you know how to get to the pinned items in a Slack channel, right? Um, there's a... I think it's at the top center of the menu. Um, there's a little pin, uh, and, you, and just click on that pin, 
uh, once you get into the right channel, you click on that pin and it shows you all the articles, all the items that were pinned. And I, I try to keep that to a minimum. I think there's only a few items pinned uh, for, this, for this study group. So that's how you get to this uh, schedule. And then from the schedule, you can get to the Zoom, uh, the Zoom link uh, so that every week you'll, it's gonna be the same Zoom chat room every week. Um, and so you always be able, you always know where it is from the schedule, see that? Um, and then uh, you can also get to the, the book itself uh, if you need to look at it. Uh, I, mean, I, I mean, this is, what you, I'm a pre presuming that you have the book, uh, but this is a link to the book on, on Amazon. And then um, this is a, a basically a schedule. And what I've tried to do, I've tried to leave enough time to uh, properly deal with all the material in a chapter and uh, knowing that everybody is not going to be a full-time student. So you're not going to be able to put in like, uh, you know, 15 hours of reading per week on each chapter, you know, so some of the chapters are quite long. And so I've divided them up into what I think are bite-sized pieces, maybe 20, 20, less than 25 pages per week that we'll cover. And uh, to do that, I've had to stretch this thing out quite a lot, as you can see. Um, it's, oh, I spelled something wrong. Um, it goes all the way out to uh, February of 2021, as you'll see. So this is a long-term project, everybody. <laughs> so uh, I've, I've put in holidays where we'll have a 4th of July holiday, even though that doesn't mean anything to people who are outside the US. Um, we'll have a, uh, a Labor Day holiday. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll have a Christmas holiday and uh, my intent is to cover the entire book, so uh, we'll finish by February 7th. Um, those of you who are, whose aims are different, that you don't need to be in there for the whole book, um, you know, you might jump ship anytime you want. Anytime you get to any get, anytime you get to the point where you've had enough, you know, you you've covered the things that you feel you need to cover. Um, you can you can just uh, you know just stop coming. So you you know you maybe you'll be done right here when we finish natural language processing, or maybe. Uh, maybe your interest is only through image processing, and then you'll be done here. Um, hopefully, you'll stay with the stay with for the whole class. This is a very comprehensive introduction to machine learning, um, especially the you know the last as it was in the state of the art in 2019. I think that's when the last this edition was made. Um, so it goes all the way into uh, generative learning um, and autoencoders, and it goes into reinforcement learning. And, um, and then I like this chapter at the end, how to train and deploy uh, TensorFlow models at scales. So this will really give you pretty much everything you need to know to be a machine learning engineer or, uh, or a data scientist. Um, yeah, so that's an overview of where we're gonna go. Um, does anybody else wanna talk about why they're here, what they hope to get out of the class, introduce themselves, um, say something? Feel free to jump right in. Um, I'll go ahead. Um, sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Shona. Um, I am a software engineer. I've been working as a software engineer for the past six years. Currently, I work as a developer consultant. So I work, the company I work for, we take on really large clients where we create, where we build software from them, for them. Um, and we do work with a lot of machine learning. Currently, I work with a lot of data scientists who sort of handle the black, the magic that is machine learning. Um, and so I'm taking this class so that I could be more well-versed and be able to create and alter and do more things other than just the strict engineering question. Um, so I'm really excited about this class. I happened to buy the book just about a week or two before I learned of this class. So I'm really happy to be here. I'm really excited for the learning that we're going to be doing. That's terrific. Well, we're glad to have you. Yeah, hi. My, my background is uh, similar to Shola's, and my reasons as well are very similar. So I'm engineer, an engineer by trade, and um, yeah, coming up against projects where there's a, a large machine learning component, and, and it is very interesting, and just trying to yeah, understand a little bit more of what's going on with those requirements and why the requirements are landing. Um, are, are understanding a little bit more of how the requirements are formulated and being able to um, yeah, implement solutions that are just not um, 
reading from the script, so to speak. That's terrific. I guess the, the last chapter for both of you software engineers, for everybody else who's a software engineer, the last chapter on implementing uh, models and TensorFlow at, uh, at scale is probably going to be really, uh, really of interest to you. Uh, yeah, hey guys, my name is Arshad. Uh, I'm a software engineer and uh, a startup founder. And my company is uh, kind of developing a product for um, identifying leads, enriching their data, and then doing outreach. So I'm quite uh, interested in natural language processing uh, to, to do all the enrichment of the data for the leads. Uh, yeah, so I just want to learn as much as possible um, in uh, mainly natural language processing, but I'm interested in all other aspects as well. Yeah, that's me. Great, thank you. Uh, I think I can go next. Um, my name is Maria. I am uh, currently working as a statistician for self-service in the UK. So like this, this is probably not very useful for my line of work, but I'm really interested in, in machine learning and deep learning in general. Um, yeah, and I just wanted to explore. So we've done uh, with a group uh, in our in our local area. We've done we've done part part one of version three and now part one of version four. So I kind of wanted to branch out a little bit more to to machine learning as opposed to just deep learning. That's nice. Um, yeah, I think that um, statistics is is one of the. I guess one of the pillars of of, uh, of machine learning, and and that's where a lot of people don't have a lot of background. So uh, I guess in the course of this, um, you'll be a, a great resource for everyone um, to direct them to places where they can uh, fill in their background on probability and statistics and so on. Uh, let me go next. Uh, my name is Shubhashish Mukherjee. Hello, everyone. I'm from uh, India. And uh, actually, previously, this is not the first book that I'll go through. Previously, I tried to go through the Bishop's book and the Trevor uh, Christian's book for uh, the statistical learning. So mm -hmm. I found that the book, uh, those books are though well written, but it would be better if we can uh, collaborate as a team for understanding this kind of a bit theoretical granular level book, which has got a theoretical grounding to it. So I got to know that this book is a terrific book as far as the machine learning introduction, as well as the whole of the machine learning uh, spectrum is concerned. So I'm very interested to go through this one. And apart from this, course I'm also uh, associated with other course for 2ML course uh, like the CA, CS 224N and others. So yeah, these groups are really helpful and one more thing I'll need to add here is that uh, I have received a very generous grant from the 2ML community because this book's <clears throat> price was uh, a bit at the higher end so they have generously provided as a gift for the book and I'm really grateful uh, to specifically Joseph and other team members for that one. So I look forward to have a great time with all you guys. Well, thanks, Sebarish. It's great to have you here. Um, yeah, I, I guess that book, Elements of Machine Learning, uh, Elements of Statistical Learning, that's the one you, you were looking at before? Uh, the one by Tip Sharani, that's huge. That's a really huge tome to get through. Exactly. Um, they, also wrote, they also wrote a smaller one. Um, let me see, I think I have it here. Um, it's a condensed version of that, call, and it's called um, An Introduction to Statistical Learning. I'm not sure. How, if you can see this very well in my camera, can you see it? Uh, no, your uh, that uh, schedule is uh, still shared. Oh, um, well, let's see. Mm, okay. Well, anyway, so the the book is called An Introduction to Statistical Learning, and it's mm -hmm. uh, but it's focused on applications in R. But um, so I I'm not a person that loves R's, but I've I did find that this was a really good condensed version of of the the big book, and uh, it's a good reference okay. book. Okay. Yes, yeah, Introduction to Statistical Learning by the same uh, let's see, uh, Gareth, oh, James, mm -hmm. yeah, Robert, uh, Tip Sharani and Hasty are both involved, but uh, they're not the principal authors. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. how many pages of in this? Uh, this, is a, this is a small book. It's got about, uh, let's see, four, 418 pages, uh, excluding the index. Um, it's, it's a good, uh, I find that it's a good uh, reference book. You can look yeah. up things, and it's got very nice explanations of things. It's good for beginners. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, as to what Sabash has said, um, we do have some uh, uh, some money for books um, to purchase books for students for whom the book would be a barrier to getting into the class. Um, like Sabash has said, um, s some people I know that, that they look at this and it's forty five dollars or whatever, thirty eight dollars, um, and they say I just can't do this. I don't have those funds. 
Um, if you're one of those people, please message me. We have some funds available to uh, to get these books out to you. It's a it, it'll be a it will be a Kindle version, not a paper version, but uh, uh, but but that's uh, that's that's what we're going to do. So if if you don't have the book and you feel like you really uh, couldn't take this class unless uh, you know without without getting the money for the book, uh, just message me and uh, we'll see what we can do. We do have some funds left. Okay. And Joseph, just to <clears throat> add one last point, uh, the way I uh, messaged you that I was having a tough time downloading the book. So uh, I have been able to, the way you suggested me, I have been able to get it done. So I have the book with me now. Thank you a lot. Excellent. Okay, so so sometimes I, I don't understand why this is, but uh, when you send somebody a Kindle version of a book in, from Amazon, they say, "Oh, you can't you can't have this book because you're not in the United States." So uh, it, 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 they have licensing restrictions or something. If that happens to you, then uh, there's a way around that uh, uh, Avinash figured out, and that is to set up an account uh, within the United States. Set up your own Amazon account from within the United States, and then then they'll think you're a United States person and you won't have any trouble getting the, uh, getting the book. Yes, sorry, that's the same way I did it. Yeah, okay. Uh, should I go next? Sure. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I really want to start thank thanking Joseph for actually organizing such wonderful sessions. Uh, I'm Prasad uh, from India. Uh, I've been in data science uh, for, for more than seven years and I'm currently working as a DS manager at a company uh, called Navi. Um, so for the people who are actually uh, planning to buy a lot of books, uh, the easiest way to get out is like get an ACM uh, membership, which costs around 75 US dollars on a yearly basis. And you would get access to the entire Safari uh, or RLA uh, online library. That's, that's how I, I do it. Uh, I mean, previously I used to pay around like 120, uh, 120 US dollars on a yearly basis, but that's, that has been slashed to like, uh, pretty much around 75 US dollars if you're in US. If you're in India, it's just like maybe 2000 bucks. So it's like $40. So it's it's pretty economical compared to uh, when you compare buying each an individual title. Oh, that's interesting. So what $75 a year, you're saying yeah. uh, the O'Reilly, the people that put out these O'Reilly, and then you'll have access to any book you want from O'Reilly? Right. That's, that's true. That's true. Oh, that's great. Yeah, along with O'Reilly, you would actually get access to uh, Skillsoft and a bunch of other things as well. Um, so I, I, I find it very useful. Okay, thank you. No problem. Uh, can I go next? Sure. Uh, so my name is Tuchiko and I'd like to thank the organizers for putting this together. I, <laughs> I'm not into software engineering. I am an energy analyst. And most of the data we deal with in deal with um, in the U.S. energy sector is kind of structured, and and so I I want to use machine learning inspired approach to um, sort of analyze energy data and um, solve power systems problems. And so yeah, that's why I'm here today. Yeah, that's great. Uh, to Tochiku, is that? how you say yes. your name? Yes. Yes. Well, um, yeah. So the first half of the course uh, is, is really machine learning. And then the second half is deep learning. So you'll get what you want out of the, uh, at least uh, a lot of what you want out of the first half of the class. And then you can certainly stay the, stay the rest of the way. I think uh, deep learning can also handle structured data problems uh, and sometimes maybe do a better job than, than machine learning. So uh, that's, I'll just throw that out there. Um, if you're, a, if you're, somebody who's really, really, I mean, I'm, this is for everybody else. If you're something who's really, really champing at the bit to get into the deep learning part, you will have to wait quite a while because the, the first half of the book is machine learning, but it, I don't think it hurts anybody to get a thorough grounding in uh, machine learning techniques before they dive into deep learning. Can I go next? Sure. Yes, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Khadija. I'm a second year PhD student and my main research area is computer vision. So today I'm here because normally I've been working with PyTorch like one year ago. So, and I've never got a chance to work with TensorFlow. So I think that uh, reading this book will uh, make me learn TensorFlow and also will make my uh, information on deep learning and machine learning very fresh. 
So, uh, and also like, I uh, like reading uh, deep learning and machine learning related books. And I think that doing it together is much better than reading the book alone. So thank you so much, Joseph, for this opportunity. And I'm very excited to start learning with you guys. Well, great. Um, yeah, um, the, the most of our, many of us have gotten here through Fast AI. We've taken some of the classes from Jeremy, and, and as you know, Fast AI is built on top of PyTorch. But there is a whole other approach out there, and that's the TensorFlow approach. And I, for one, want to learn more about it. I, I think both of these approaches are, are are excellent. They're competing with each other so much, and when that happens, they they start. Whenever two technologies compete with each other, they start to become identical, and that's what's that's what's happened with. Uh, with PyTorch and TensorFlow, they've each uh, sort of poached off of each other the best features of each other, and now they're they now no one can really argue that one has something the other one doesn't have. In most cases, they they've remedied that. So it's whenever you have competition like this between two technologies, it's it's really great. But there are wherever you go, there's going to be some people who are going to insist that you work within the Python with PyTorch technical stack and other people that will insist that you work within TensorFlow. And so it's best to hedge your bets and learn both, as, as Khadija said. Yes, exactly. Khadija, can I, uh, this is Mash, can I pull you into a little bit of controversy and try to pull everybody in? And uh, apologies for taking a little more, little time here. The topic of TensorFlow versus PyTorch. Uh, my personal opinion, um, and I'm not I haven't been able to get fully into the statistics behind all this. Tens at neural networks as a statistical framework, I mean, we're building on applied statistics to do this. You have PyTorch, which comes from uh, Facebook, that developed their own stack to implement neural networks in their own way, knowing their context was the kind of data sets that they structure data sets that they work with. Google works with different types of data, so they develop their own implementation, which is TensorFlow. There's Keras, which is um, the API layer for the core TensorFlow stack. PyTorch um, doesn't quite have an API layer, but Facebook designed PyTorch itself uh, to be easily callable and usable. Uh, fast AI is built like an API layer like Keras on top of PyTorch. But at the end of the day, if you kind of go down to the roots of this, it's just implementing and working with neural networks. Um, this book, the, my belief is that this book and what we're what Aurelian has um, in the later deep learning sections really gets to here's how neural networks work. Here's how they we construct deep learning frameworks and methods, what we call deep learning, and we're gonna use TensorFlow to implement it and execute it uh, and do those computations and so on. Anybody else feel the same way? Can anybody add a little bit more? Or um, can, if I'm not right about some of the things I've said, please um, share. The, the main difference as I see it uh, between TensorFlow and PyTorch is the, the use of a computation graph mm -hmm. where um, in TensorFlow you need to set up your computations more statically. I think that has changed with the, um, the more recent version of TensorFlow where it does support a more imperative type evaluation um, of, of variables, but PyTorch were the, were the first to do that. But I think that has meant that TensorFlow might be is more performant than PyTorch because it can it forces you in, in, into a way of of defining your your deep learning model that allows it to optimize it. But mm -hmm. yeah, I, I'm I'm a fan of um of PyTorch just because it's closer to Python. Mm -hmm. uh, but I haven't looked at TensorFlow in a couple of years, so I don't know. I from what I've read it's it's they're quite close. They're getting quite close. Yeah, and and Jeremy, has, uh, I guess last year he was working on this project where, uh, with the fellow who wrote Swift uh, to to integrate Swift into TensorFlow, um, um, and Jeremy was really all excited about that. But to tell you, to be honest, you know, I took the the deep learning from the foundations class, and the last two lectures I think were were basically the, uh, um, about 
the Swift implementation for TensorFlow. And uh, I, I have to say that most of that went right over my head. I just didn't, I just didn't, didn't follow it. So, um, and, uh, but, but the point is, is that Jeremy, who has worked intensively with, with PyTorch, uh, now sees a reason to, to, to work with TensorFlow as well. And so it can't hurt to become, uh, work, to have a working knowledge of both. So, uh, we'll be concentrating on that uh, TensorFlow and Keras, uh, as as Marsh said in in this book. Yeah, I think um, you know just the history, the brief as it is, because both emerged fairly recently. But TensorFlow came out first, was stagnant for quite a while, frankly, and it indicates what competition does. And then the Facebook came out with PyTorch and was as I think it was Adrian who stated that uh, the closeness to Python and the fact that it was a lot simpler to program and set up rather than going through all the static uh, setup of <clears throat> graphs that was required of you uh, forced TensorFlow in the last year or two to switch and become quote unquote dynamic, which essentially and significantly narrowed the gap between the two implementations to where and in fact, the rewrite of hands-on machine learning, there was a version one, the version two, the rewrite for it, the major rewrite reason is all the later parts are actually now compliant to TensorFlow 2 versus the previous one, which you know I spent a lot of time on, was totally focused on TensorFlow 1 because that was what was available then. Mm -hmm. And that makes this book more relevant because it's, applicable and there are fewer books which have been written to TensorFlow 2 than there are to TensorFlow uh, version 1. And version 2 of TensorFlow, in fact, I would say is hugely motivated by the success PyTorch has had, and at least to my knowledge, though because probably of that lead, but a few other reasons as well, which we'll probably get into in the deployment section is TensorFlow is more commonly deployed while PyTorch is more often used by researchers because it's so flexible and quick to experiment. Yeah, that, although that latter thing is changing. I think if you look at uh, indus industry graphs of, you know, timelines of how many people are, are using TensorFlow versus how many people are using PyTorch, PyTorch is, is getting an increasing uh, share of the industrial uh, users. Uh, they're, they're not just academic users anymore. So it's, it's good to know both. <clears throat> Yeah. Anyone else wants to introduce themselves? There's so many of you. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. This is one Sean. Uh, I sign up on a couple uh, uh, um, chapters, so you guys will probably uh, hear me talking um, in a couple months. Um, and uh, I'm a data scientist who has been in the industry for a couple years. Um, just feeling like there's still a lot to learn. Um, I worked in uh, a marketing AI company uh, focusing on like analyzing people's emotions and uh, personalities to help brands target uh, their audience better. Um, and uh, so now I'm trying to come up with a voice product uh, to help people improve their uh, mental productivity. So I've been pretty much a data scientist focusing on social psychology and I have a really big passion for it. Um, the reason why I'm here is that um, I kind of want to, uh, as a data scientist, I kind of want to just solidify my knowledge from like any intuition to theory to coding and to the mathematics behind all the codes to kind of have a holistic understanding of what's going on and hope to be able to perhaps tweak or come up with my uh, own learning algorithms down the road. Um, so, yes, thank you. Great. Thanks, Wen Cheng. Uh, hey, guys, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, hey, so uh, I'm Dipanshu. Uh, I'm a data science graduate student. Um, so much of this, uh, I've done a lot with classical machine learning. Uh, but that was about a year ago and I wanted to kind of again like solidify my concepts and uh, uh, get things more clear. So that is one of the reasons that I'm here. And uh, 
the second part of the book is on uh, deep learning and although i have done some some things in it but like i've not like tackled the end, like all the things that you can do with it but, and this book allows us to do that so i was hoping to like do both of those things there super yeah yeah the book is divided in basically halves and one half is machine learning the other half is deep learning so you'll get what you want Anyone else? Okay, then uh, let, let's just take a, a look at uh, uh, some of the things. Um, so what I wanted to do, my main goal for this session, uh, it doesn't have to go for two hours. My main goal is just to get you uh, started on, on um, implementing the, uh, on getting an environment set up for yourself so you can run the codes in this book. and um, for now, I don't think we're going to, especially for the machine learning part, we're not going to need a GPU. So if you just have a laptop or whatever, that should be fine. Um, let me share a screen here. Um, let's see, here and nope, that's not it. Let's see. See, I'm having a little trouble sharing this, but I'll get it in a minute. Uh, let's see. Back. I want to get rid of this thing. Okay. The Zoom interface is, is, even though I've been using it for a long time, it, it can be improved. I mean, there's, there's several different windows. I'd like to see them all integrated into one so that you can access all the controls in one place. But... That's not the way it is. Um, let me see. What am I sharing right now? Your Amazon page. Ah, that's not what I want to share. Okay, stop that. Oh, actually, that is okay. Now it should. Now I should be sharing the um, uh, Jerome's um, GitHub site. Is that what you're seeing? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. So, so Aurelian Jerome, he's the author of this book, um, and um, you can see this is the website I'm at. The, his GitHub site. And it's uh, he's got <coughs> GitHub sites for both of his books. I mean, for the for the first edition as well. But what we want is the second edition. So this is where I am. Um, and you'll notice that he's got um, he's got the data sets that we're going to need. He's got, um, but mainly he's got these notes notebooks um, that are going to be used to go through all of the chapters. There's a notebook for each chapter. And so what we need. Uh, and there are some several. There are several other notebooks as well. Um, so these are the these are the notebooks we're going to be going through in this class. And so the first thing we need to be able to do <clears throat> is to be able to run these notebooks. Um, and if you're not familiar with Jupyter, with the Jupyter notebooks, um, this is your chance to get familiar. Um, so first thing I would recommend is that you install Python on your machine um, using the Anaconda version. And if you haven't done that yet, or if you have questions about it, please uh, ask questions on the Slack group, and I guarantee you that people will jump in and help. Um, so there's two ways to, to run these notebooks. One is to run them on your own machine, um, which I'm going to go through today. But the other way is to run them on Colab, which is a free service that, that Google provides. You can actually, you can actually even access uh, GPUs on, on Colab. So you can run your, the notebooks on Colab as well as on your own machine. And he's got another tech, another way to run it on Binder. I don't know anything about Binder, but that's another thing we can look at. Um, and then he's got this thing, Deep Note. It's a third way to run these notebooks. So for now, we're going to look at running them on your own, running them on your own machine. Um, and to do that, you have to start by installing um, Anaconda, which is Pyth which is the Python distribution that we're going to use. Um, you should have GitHub also installed, Git actually installed, and then um, if you haven't already, you should you should inst and if your machine has a GPU, then you should install the, the correct driver for for it. So there's a little more information about that here. Um, next, okay. So I'm going to assume you've done all that stuff, um, and if you haven't, you'll have a chance to ask questions about it uh, 
find out about it and ask questions on the Slack group on our hands-on ML, hands-on machine learning Slack group, and uh, you'll get help. Um, but uh, assuming you already have those things done, then the next thing you have to do is you have to clone the, uh, all of these files so that they appear on your own machine. All of these files that we're seeing here, um, you want to get this distribution of, of, you want to get all this stuff on your own machine. And the way to do that is to use git clone, and you can clone it on your own machine. So that's what's going on here. Um, if you run this in a, in a shell, in a, in a shell window on your, on your machine, um, you, can then, uh, you can then run git clone, and it's going to copy all this stuff to your, to your machine locally. Uh, and in that, it's going to be a directory hands-on ML2. So you just CD into that directory. Um, and then he, sa he tells you if your machine has a GPU uh, and you want to be able to use it, you have to edit these two files, um, environment.yml or environment-windows.yml if you're using Windows. Um, you have to replace uh, TensorFlow equals 2.00 with TensorFlow-GPU equals 2.00. That tells, that tells the environment file that you have a GPU that can be used. And then you also have to replace this one um, to, uh, to, to the GPU API. So these, the, these are the two changes you have to make in, in this environment file in order to be able to use your GPU if you have one. Um, and then next you have to create an, uh, a Conda environment. Um, and a Conda environment is kind of like a, <clears throat> it's kind of like a compartment that you can, it's kind of like a, a workspace that you can jump into when you want to, um, when you want to work with these notebooks. So um, the environment file has all the information you need uh, to, to activate that environment, to create the environment. Um, so that's the first thing you do. Uh, and remember, he says that if you have a Windows machine, you have to use this version of the environment file. Um, so, so the first step here is creating the environment uh, that we're going to use for hands-on ML. And the second step is activating that environment. And the environment's going to be referred to as TF2. That's its name. So in the future, when you want to work in, once you've done this, when you want to work with your hands-on machine learning notebooks, you just go conda activate TF2, and that will put you in the TF2 environment. Okay, and then the first time through you do this, you have to install, um, you have to install um, the IPy kernel. Uh, and that's how, this is the command that you do, that you use to do that. Um, now, let's see. Um, then you have to install, let's see. He says if you're on Windows, you have to do this. Um, this is some, I'm not sure what this is. It's some kind of package that we'll be using, but later, much later on in the, in the course. So if you haven't done this immediately, it doesn't matter too much, I don't think. And then once you've done all these installations, you can then start Jupyter Notebook. So um, let me show you what that will look like. I'm going to do that on my machine. Let's see. I won't do all the installations, but I'll show you what the Jupyter Notebook looks like uh, once you get it. So first, let's see if I can. All right, um, let's see, I want to share. Stop share, share. Okay. Okay, I should now be sharing a shell, uh, just a terminal window, right? It's an anaconda window. Can everybody see that? The terminal window. Yes, the terminal window, yeah. And and it's showing me that I'm in the, that I'm in the, um, that I'm in the base environment, that's what it shows you here. So I've already made, I've already built the, the TF2 environment, so I'm just gonna go activate, um, I'm gonna go conda activate. Once you've installed this, this is, this is what you'll do. You'll go into a terminal window, you'll write conda activate TF2, and then it will activate that environment for you and everything will be available that we've just installed. So now it's showing me that my environment is called TF2 and I'm, and I'm there. So now I want to do is I want to go to hands-on ML. Again, I've already installed this. Um, and let's see, it should have. Let's see. I don't remember the name of it. Um, let's see. Um, should be hands-on ML. Let's see. Yes, hands-on ML2. One word. Hands-on. OK, so now I'm in that. Whoops, didn't like that because I didn't put CD in front of it. CD. Uh, okay, now I'm in the hands-on ML2 directory. 
uh, this is built for you when you when you do the git command, right? And installs all the uh, all the hands-on ML2 files in in your in, in this directory. So now, if I look around here, uh, you'll see everything there. All of the notebooks that we saw, uh, you know, these are all the the, the notebooks. Notebook Jupyter notebooks have an extension dot ipynb uh, that tells you that it's a Jupyter notebook. So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to bring up Jupyter. Um, let me see. Bring up Jupyter, and so to do that, I go uh, Jupyter Notebook. That's the command to bring up Jupyter if you haven't done this before. Um, and now what it's going to do is going to open up a browser. Uh, it's going to open up in my browser, um, which you can't see now because I'm not sharing it. But I'm going to go back to sharing it. Uh, let's see. Go back to sharing that. And here I am. Okay. Can everybody see now? I'm in the. Oops. This is not where I want to be. Um, hold on. It's not the share. Share what I want to share. Uh, hmm. oh, okay. Uh, so we're here for a sec. This out of the way. This out of the way. I know what to do here. Okay, now I'm gonna now I'm gonna be able to share what I want to share. But uh, I'll return to meeting. Here we go. Share. Sorry, this is taking a bit, but I'm almost there. Share the screen that I want to share, and here it is. Okay, so can you see now? I'm in um, the Jupyter window. Everybody see this? Yes. Yeah. So, so this this little um, orange crescent thing, uh, orange up crescent and down crescent. This is the uh, this is Jupyter Notebook, and so it's opened up. When I executed that command in the terminal, it automatically opened up this window uh, that allows me to see all of the files in my directory that I've call, that I called it from. So I called it from the directory ML hands on ML2. So it's showing me all the notebooks that are available to run. So Let's just pick the first one, um, which we'll be study. We'll be running through that this week. Um, and hold on for a minute. I'm going to mute some participants so that we can hear. Yes, um, great. So now we're in uh, notebook one, right? And uh, it's a very short notebook. It's most of it is is to. It says you you get down a few uh, cells and it says you can ignore the rest of the notebook because it's just generating the figures that are in chapter one. So it's a very short notebook. Let's just um, execute some of it. Uh, this is sort of a standard command. You import the uh, packages that you're going to need, um, and this command says that make sure that you've got um, the right versions of Python and so on. Um, we're going to import scikit-learn. Scikit-learn. And we're going to import, and it's making sure that we import one of the later versions. Scikit-learn is one of the main parts of this course. It's going to be used for all the machine learning in the first half. Um, and Scikit-learn just came out with a, a new version, uh, 0.23, this past week or so. So you'll probably be using that one. Uh, let's see. OK, so then uh, what's it doing here? I, I think it's preparing some data set that we're going to be using uh, to, to understand what it is we'll have to. It looks like it has something to do with GDP, gross uh, uh, GDP uh, per capita, life satisfaction. So it's some kind of a data set that gives you information about that. Um, it says the code expects the data files to be uh, in the current directory. That's ANS on ML, so they're there. Um, so we're going to import. OS, we're going to tell it the data path to our data sets. Um, this is just for plotting. Now we're going to download the data that we need. And that's pretty quick. That's done. Uh, and then load the data, prepare the data, visualize the data, um, select a linear model, train the model and make a prediction for the country of Cyprus. So that's, what's, that's all the stuff that's going on in that. In that. 
Um, and you can see basically the plotting. It's plotting the data for you. Um, um, it hasn't. It, it isn't showing you a lot of the rest of it. Um, we've, we're just visualizing the data. You can see that it looks like a linear model. The GDP uh, increases with life satisfaction. So uh, it looks like a linear model. Uh, the rest of the commands are actually fitting the linear model, uh, and uh, and getting uh, an, and getting a prediction. Training the model here, getting a prediction, and uh, let's see. I think that's the prediction of 5.96. We're predicting life satisfaction. I think from GDP. So it's saying that for Cyprus, it's GDP lies somewhere around here. <clears throat> that would so the line would go like this, and uh, so the we should, when we go through this, we'll actually draw the line, and then we'll see that uh, it's it's taken Cyprus, which has a GDP per capita of about twenty thousand, whatever those units are, maybe dollars, um, and then it predicts what the life satisfaction of people in in Cyprus are. So that's just this little introductory exercise. But hopefully, you see the power of of uh, Jupyter notebooks. You can use them to present uh, code models. Uh, you can you can explain what you've done. You can document your code. Um, you can produce pretty gla pretty graphs and 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 so on. So it's it's a, it's a really for me it's it's the way to develop code. I think I know a lot of people don't don't think that way. They're um, they've been around for a long time and they like developing in an ID in an uh, IDE integrated development environment that's more flexible than this. But um, I just think that. Um, for me, this is this is the way that I like to develop code, just in a, just in a notebook. And then, if I have to, I'll I'll abstract out the files and put them in a, pi, a .py file. But I I almost never have to do that. Um, okay. So, are there any questions about this? Yes, Joseph. Uh, we can also do the same thing in Google Colab, right? Absolutely. In fact, since we have some more time, I think I'll do that. Uh, I'll go through. Yeah, that. someone here is suggesting Mash to do that yes, as well. Someone is yes. yes. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. So, um, mosey on over back to the uh, to the uh, GitHub repository. As you, as you yeah. start that, Joseph, um, I I've got it set up too. Uh, I just put on the text. I was doing exactly the same thing you just did, step by step, more or less. Uh, but on Google Colab, and would you I'm like to share? Great. Would you like to share your screen and do that? Then I'll share. Sure I'll stop mine. Yeah. Sure thing. Okay, Mash. Thank you. And of course. Um, where am I? That one's the one. All right. Um, you know what? I if this looks funny, please let me know. Um, I probably should be sharing, uh, not the full. Uh, window maybe just uh, should have been more careful. Yeah, it, it, I can see it, but it looks uh, yeah. very the the print the the type is very small. To see. Yeah, yeah. Give me a sec. Let me just. Sure, sure. no problem. So Google Colab, uh, if you haven't met with it before, it's fantastic. It's it's uh, it it basically throws open the doors to using GPUs to, for people who can't afford them or people who don't have them on their own machines. Mm -hmm. um, Google basically lets you use their GPUs for free, and it's an incredible amount of processing power. So um, whenever, um, Mash, whenever you're ready, you can go ahead. Are you, are, okay. Um, you guys should now be able to see just my browser window yep. uh, showing my Google Colabs. So for, I have, have a whole bunch of different uh, folders and, and always a good idea to keep things organized. I tell myself, but I don't. I prefer to keep my <laughs> code in a code folder, but then there's a separate collab notebook. So we'll just get into it. Um, the first thing you guys want to do is um, a few things to keep in mind. A collab notebook, like a Jupyter notebook, will, unlike a Jupyter notebook, I'm sorry, a collab notebook will be its own environment fully. So the code that you run on any given uh, Colab notebook is not going to transfer over or stay in memory when you run a different notebook. Okay, this thing is, I think this is really important because the first code block that you see I've got here, and I'll walk through and share this notebook if other people need it. So 
Don't worry about taking notes too quickly. Just follow along and please ask questions. Um, the first thing I do is run this little code block. You guys can get this everywhere. This tells Colab Notebook that you authenticate and authorize it to be able to use the contents of your own local Google Drive. Why? Because Colab Notebooks there's will put a folder on your Google Drive, which will contain whatever Colab Notebooks you decide to put in there. Um, separately, sometimes I'll put work with a separate Google Drive folder, um, and that'll put stuff there and whatnot. So you guys need to give Google Colab instance at any given time, and this for as long as this notebook is being, this session is being run, you need to give it authorization to touch your drive. Then, of course, you have these little commands of where am I um, uh, CD over to that code notebook, okay, and so on. Now, the one thing that you guys will have to do, we all have to do one time, this is why I'll do just this on a scratch, is I will copy that Git repo that uh, Joseph shared with us, um, the GitHub repo for Aurelian, uh, for his uh, hands-on ML book. So let's, you guys can go, go, you guys seen the repo, let's clone that repo entirely down, all right? Once you do that, I've, I put it into my code folder. So when I go into my code folder, here's the repo. I downloaded just, I cloned it just a short while ago and it has everything, all the notebooks, all the data set files that are gonna be used as well as other things. The other requirements.txt file, the YAR environment YAML file, everything, environment windows YAML file, all of it's here. All right, you guys can work off of this. Now, this, because it, any changes that you save, you could end up erasing it if you were to overwrite and pull down a new version of this repo. Uh, so please be mindful and careful. Um, I'm gonna get, come back to that point in just a moment. So here's the first notebook, right? Uh, don't click on this button because all this button is saying is kick off the same Jupyter notebook in Google Colab. So don't do that. Or if you do, it'll end up uh, loading Aurelian's uh, copy of his Jupyter notebook and then you have to kind of save it again and blah, 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 all that fun stuff. All right. Um, if I go to try to rename the file, I don't think I can. Um, but anyway, we'll come back to that. So let's, let's run it. Uh, first few thing, uh, the code blocks, import system, import scikit-learn, and then here's a different code block. I want to see the versions that are being run. So I want to just copy this from one of my other notebooks, but if you do, you import scikit-learn and then run this, print scikit-learn, period, uh, like function, format the version of the scikit-learn package. And you'll see the one that Google Colab default imports is not the latest uh, 0.23 version that Joseph mentioned, but it's 0.22.2.postl. So it's not the latest and greatest. So if you want the latest and greatest specifically, you need, there's a, there's a code, you guys can look this up, um, that installs that specific version of that code. Then once you do that, I'm gonna go through this a little quickly. Um, don't use Aurelian's own code. Like here's, run this. This is just a Python um, function that's defined called prepare country stats and it takes certain variables and so on. Um, but we need that file. So since I cloned the entire folder over, um, I believe Aurelian's uh, code was to download the files off of uh, the web. I didn't do that. Instead of doing that, what I did was, I've, I know that I've already got the, the data sets that he wants us to use in this folder, uh, data sets slash lifestat. Um, I'll just point to that, 
point to root here, make sure you give this notebook authorization to touch your drive. Um, you can see what, what it's got. And then uh, I will run, where is, where did I run it? This block here, these files. And I run it with data path being equal to, I should have, I, bear with me, sorry about that. Data path is, uh, should be pointing to this really. Okay, and then from there to the name of that file. Where did I define data path? Data path. It's way up on top, I think. <clears throat> did I do it way up on top? I think so, I think I saw it up there. Yeah. I. I I went back and forth. Uh, there it is, uh, data path on the bottom right there. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. So data path was data sets, data sets slash live stat. Okay. And that's it. Once you've got that, then it's just a matter of just read the CSV files, taking it from your local space um, and follow along. Now, can I save this? Can I rename this? No, I can't. I have to, if all these changes that I made, if I want to keep it, I have to save a copy. Uh, creating a copy, oh, uh, opens up a new tab and I don't know where it's saved. And again, none of this will, it just saves it. Is it gonna be saved in your collab, in your collab notebooks mm. folder? Yeah. I don't Can I so. add a point? The yeah, name can be edited copy. if you double click on copy mm -hmm. of 01 is there, right? If you just double click there, the name can be edited. We can save it as uh, there itself. Yeah, you can. This you can change can. it, yeah. This one I can. Um, let me do this. No, let's no, find where this it. file, check yeah. for. Okay, I'm gonna change the name of this file. And let's go on up. You guys are gonna look at my drive. Uh, where did I put the check for it will be i think it's automatically call up yeah. call up notebooks, call up notebooks. i think yeah let's see yeah there it, it is there? check for all right check for. There. there it is and that's where it puts it so yep. slash content that default slash content goes right here so um well, I, i've forgotten how that collab notebook folder got created did, did you create that or did collab no. create it when collab you... created it okay when great I first so started it's... that instance long god knows how long ago mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so uh marsh one question here yes sir uh when you when you import or when you clone the git repo i believe uh, i mean you are when you clone from the collab itself from mm -hmm. a notebook, the Git repo gets uh, downloaded to your uh, My Drive folder, right? Inside your uh, Google Drive. Yes, it does. Now, so what I did was, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, go ahead. Yeah. Now, when you actually create a notebook in Colab, it, that notebook gets stored inside that Colab notebook folder. But once you download the Git clone, it is going to clone outside the Colab notebook. So can we run any notebook that is outside that Colab notebook folder? Can I CD into that folder and run from there or something like that? I did. I absolutely did. Because as you can see, I was running, I'm running some of my notebooks here on, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't see why not. Let's open a new one. So, Let's open this. Um, I, I cloned Aurelian's uh -huh. Git repo to a, yeah, uh -huh. to a different folder, not Colab notebooks, on to my code right. folder. Okay? Right. So now if I double click it, uh, I get the option to open it with Google Colab because it's saved as a Python notebook. Uh -huh. and it's opening it and it's done. So now, now that I've got it here, let's run the first code block. Uh -huh. It runs. I'm also gonna create another code block where I'm just gonna say uh, asterisk PWD because I want to see where am I, I'm in content. So now if I were to save this file, I would presume it would save it in the Colab, Google Colab. Okay. Yeah. That's the tricky so if, thing. Okay. Yeah. So if you make yeah. any changes, you can open the notebook from there. But yeah. if you make any changes to the notebook and save that notebook, it is not going to be set inside the out in the outside folder. It is in going not to the be original folder. Saved, uh, mm -hmm. It will be saved inside the collab notebook folder. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. So just keep that. Was, that was the one point that I was sort of circ going circular logic uh, to try to make. Um, yeah, it's going to be here. So try to organize. I need to organize my collabs. 
Uh, yeah. uh, okay. I have a question. Yeah, I just want to add one point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in collab, uh, here you are cloning everything, right? So mm-hmm. the the easiest way would be uh, uh, opening a new notebook. While opening itself, in the top we can find. Um, just we can specify the name of the GitHub repository. So in that it will it will automatically fetches all the uh, notebooks. That will be very 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 easier. Okay. Is, so what you mean uh, is that what what you mean is that whenever you create a new notebook, there are three four tabs at the top. One of the tab is clone from a GitHub repo. That's what you are referring to. Yeah. So that will be much easier. Uh, oh. And uh, the only thing is, since this author has specified everything in the uh, every data set is remote, so we don't need to depend on the the extra space. Uh, can you open the uh, new new just a uh, new new collab? file new sure not here from collab collab page from collab okay so i'm in file collab new. file new new, new notebook mm-hmm. let's just call it let's give it a name um no 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 i don't nope. think this is the way so, so uh, once can you can just open the collab go ahead tell me what to do uh, can i share share the screen i'm sorry I, yeah. I, since i don't i find difficulty here uh-huh oh do you want to share yeah oh go ahead you're welcome to you might have to unshare first uh, oh Marsh. yeah i'm i'm s- stopping share yeah is mesh uh Is my screen visible? Yes. yes. Uh, is my screen visible? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in the browser, I'm just uh, typing uh, "collab at Google." One L. So, so I'm getting this link. So, what yeah. thing it says? Yeah. Yeah. Spec- yeah. Ask me yes. for GitHub. Uh, the thing is, uh, the thing is, we can make commit from here itself. since i ticked the private repo it's asked for uh, authorization so we can give it here so if i want to open this one so this is our uh, book chapter 1 right so we can go here then just specify here then specify a new notebook so everything will be getting loaded so, so rajesh you're you're here. showing how to open a file directly from a github repo that a uh, collab allows you yeah. to do that yeah and an individual that will save us a lot of time yeah since we don't need to uh, already uh, we we no need to uh, yeah the, those kind of uh, github cloning and those kind of stuffs are uh, it's automatically it has been done mm-hmm. so we can just reuse it as is if you want to save then we can save it uh, as mass suggested mhm and save. then and, and then it will also save to your collab directory just like when we saw mash yeah yeah uh-huh. absolutely all right okay great but in this uh, case also you need to download the thing is the thing is if there is any data dependency we have to make it uh, available as mass suggested uh, and in this book exactly. uh, i have explored some of the chapters Um, most of the data sets are in online data sets mm-hmm. so we don't have any troubles we can directly import them to collab as here they're all in that data sets directory right yeah uh, directory is there and uh, uh, if you can if you find here the the, the every time using url lib uh, the data set is getting downloaded whenever mm-hmm. we need yeah but but as much oh, said so uh, you don't really way. need to do that so by this way you don't need to download the manual files just every time when you run the uh, run the notebook it will automatically download internally and uh, access the data from there yeah yeah all right okay yeah, that was the one the thing, thing is, if, if you're you downloading save the... something then we have to careful uh, that's the only thing apart from that it is very easy way mm-hmm. Uh, so mass and joseph yeah i think i have the, uh, this is just i want to raise nothing much yeah yep so
So can I stop sharing uh, anything? Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> so, um, yeah. So thanks for all that for all that sharing. You know, I'm thinking that um, somebody asked about Wednesday, and I I hadn't really thought that through. But since we're now ready to jump into chapter one, maybe Wednesday, maybe we should switch our reading and discussion meetings to Wednesday nights, and then the the Sunday morning meetings would be the, the, you know, the practical meeting where we actually discuss all the notebooks and the solutions because we're all ready to go with uh, with chapter one. So I propose that we do that that we uh, switch the the study and reading meetings to Wednesday nights, um, and that'll also be good for people who are in the UK uh, or in Europe or whatever, uh, because for them this is going to be. Uh, during their sleep time, and so, uh, but they're only going to, they're only going to miss that 45-minute discussion, whereas, and they'll get, you know, on, on Sunday they'll be able to take advantage of the whole uh, practical session. So I, I propose to do that. I hope everybody's okay with that. Yeah, that would be brilliant. Brilliant. From... Okay. Yep. Second. That Thanks. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Good. Um, I'm excited to see all the people from. Um, just from all over the world that are in here. It's not just uh, people from the United States. There are uh, people from many, many different co countries. And if you're from a country other than the U.S., um, we do have a little bit more time. Um, I would uh, urge you to introduce yourself and let us know who you are. Okay. What country Joseph. you come from? Yeah. My name is Shamsuddin Muhammad. I'm ah. from Nigeria. Nigeria, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow. That's what what time zone are they in? Are they the same as Europe? Same as UK, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh, okay. Okay. Great. I'll just quickly go ahead. Um my name is Dinesha. I'm from UK. Uh profession wise, I I do the analytics, but as um I, I work like traditional business intelligence slash data engineering type of work. Um so the naturally the um, next stage for me is to learn more, more ML and DL and apply. Uh, I do see uh, data, but I do see a very uh, structured data and mostly financials sometime, uh, but tabular data uh, more or less. So we have been doing lots of um, corporate level uh, reporting, dashboarding, all that sort of stuff. But um, now um, the, the whole, the, that, that was the insight of what had happened before and that doesn't add up much value. So that doesn't give you any money as per the management is concerned. So people are looking <laughs> more um, how we can, we have been storing our data for like 20 years. Can you bring in any insight out of this data? Um, so that's the question being asked. So I'm just here to learn and uh, to see if I can learn anything um, specific and apply those techniques to their data and then bring some insight as um, people are saying, yes, you can, so let's see. Terrific, thanks for that intro. Um, if you're from another country, even if you're from the US and you wanna talk, speak up, but I'm particularly interested in meeting the people who are from other countries that are tuning in to our, to our study group. Uh, hi. My name is Awal Ali. I'm currently from Malaysia. So it's like 2.20 a.m. now. Oh, so that's a tough time slot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. What, will the morning time slot will be better for you then, right? Uh, sorry, the, uh, well, I don't yeah. know. The evening, will the evening, the Wednesday evening time slot be okay for you or will that be during your work day? Yeah, what time is the evening? In the uh, it'll Wednesday? be 6.30 in Pacific. Um, so are you at, uh, 16 hours later or there, I know Japan, uh, Japan is 16 hours later. Yeah. 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 Almost the same in Japan because it's uh, oh, okay. seven hours difference. Okay. That's, so that's 10 30 in the morning or 10 o'clock in the morning for, yeah, yeah. That uh, one or is it 10 30 okay. in the morning. Okay. Yeah, but that'll yeah, be, yeah. uh, that'll be Monday morning though. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay, you. great. Nice to meet you, Abel. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Anyone else? 
Hi, Joseph. Um, Hello, Parisha. Hi. Um, I'm actually based in Reading in the UK with Maria. Uh, mm -hmm. We actually we um, met and worked on um, a, a Google developer group that is uh, that ran a study group for fast.ai version um, version three. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, I'm uh, I'm a developer. I've got a long background in development, um, and I've just taken some time off to work on a PhD in uh, reinforcement learning, which I'm busy with right now. And, uh, wow, so you're, you're another one of the uh, graduate students? Uh, yeah. <laughs> we've, already, we've already met two graduate students, so that's, that's terrific. You're working on your PhD in, in what area? Reinforcement learning. Oh, great. Um, and, and Reading, where is that located uh, with respect to London? Oh, we're just outside London. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's to the west. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. is it, is it, can you commute there from London, or can you commute to London from there? Yeah. Or? Typically, oh. commute. Uh, it, it's a commuter town, <laughs> oh, okay. so okay. it's about okay. 25 minutes by train to London. And are you in University of Reading or another university? Yes, yes I am, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, anyone else? Okay, uh, well, I'm Alok, yeah. oh, uh, good, okay. I'm from the UK as well, uh, in London. I've been doing the tail end of the NLP, uh, so I'm doing a bit of NLP, uh, but started off at the tail end of the uh, fast AI version four. Mm -hmm. um, I, I could say I understood about 10% of all of that. And <laughs> my goal of this is to understand 20% of it. So very modest. You're, you're going to meet, you're going to meet that goal easily. So. <laughs> all right. Okay. Um, all right. Great. Well, we've been here for an hour and a half, and um, I think we can call this a, a day. And we'll 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 get together on Wednesday, and we'll uh, we'll go through. We'll start our work on lesson one. Uh, thank you all for being here. This is just terrific to see what uh, what a great turnout we have, and uh, I hope we'll continue to have. Uh, I hope you'll all be able to stay with the class all the way through. Again, remember if you are in need of, of uh, funds to help you to buy the book. Um, we do have some funds. Uh, message me on Slack, and we'll see what we can do about getting you a, a Kindle copy of the book, if you haven't already got it. OK, this is because of Sam Charrington. Um, Sam Charrington is the founder of, of Twimmel, and he uh, set up this scholarship fund to, to enable people to buy the books uh, if they wouldn't otherwise be able to afford them. So I just wanted to make sure you know that. All right, so with that, I'll sign off, and um, thank you all for being here, and we'll see you next week, or Wednesday, actually. <laughs>